All right, Sister Gideon, what, what is your take? We calling out everybody. <laughs> the thing um, when God created well let's go look at the word let's go to the book of Genesis uh, let's see Let's go to the second chapter of the book of Genesis, and uh, we're going to start reading. We'll start reading at verse 18. Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground of the Lord. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found in help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man mm -hmm. and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Why shall they be one flesh? Because they started off as one flesh from the beginning. And so when, when the law says it's not good for man to be alone, he wasn't just talking about uh, males. He's talking about mankind. That's, that's including females. So God took Eve out of Adam. That made them two different people, and, and, and which is the reason why. Um, it, okay, think of it like this: like a puzzle. When you put a puzzle together, you got all of those different pieces, and not one of them is shaped like the other piece, but they belong to the same puzzle. That's the way male and female are. If you think of the male as a puzzle, and, and God, our anatomies are even created that way. Mm -hmm. Which is why when they come together in, intimately, they make one flesh. Mm -hmm. Because they started off as one flesh. And you know, and it's that way emotionally, and, and everything on the inside of us is that way. That's the reason why men aren't like women, and women aren't like men. Because the part of the man that was like that woman, God took it out. Does that make any sense? You understand what I'm saying? That's the reason why it's perverted for a man to be like a woman, over-emotional. And it's perverted for a woman to be like a man, just stern and, 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 and yeah. Because the part of Adam that was emotional, like that, God took it out and created Eve with that. And so the, the idea is they complement one another. Right. And that's the reason it's not good for a man to be alone. In, in the nat you know, naturally so. It's because when a woman or a man is alone, they're not complete. 
And so I can say, well, I don't need no woman or, or whatever. Well, you know what? I'm going to be unbalanced. Why? Because I need my wife to help me to see things the way I would not naturally see it, being a man. And vice versa. She need me to see things the way that she would naturally see it, being a woman. That's the, and that's the reason why male and female need one another. Because by themselves, they don't see things a certain way. You see, they won't see the whole complete picture, in other words. And that's why it's important. That's the reason why the Bible tells us in the third chapter of 1 Peter that God, that our prayers are hindered when, when the husband and wife aren't getting along. Why? Because God sees that as a double-minded man, a double-minded person. You see that? And so our prayers can be hindered. All right, so now... Does that answer your question? All right, now let's go even a little further. Let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of, of uh, Genesis. Let's start reading in verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them. He called their name Adam. Everybody see that? Both of them were there. With one body. Does everybody see that? Reverse two again. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name and Adam. And called their name Adam. And then when God put Adam to sleep and took Eve out of him, Adam named Eve, Eve. But in the beginning, they were one body. That's the reason why God is neither male or female. Does everybody see that? He called their name Adam. And that's why the reason why it's not good for man to be alone. That's the reason why it's not good for man to be alone because when you're alone, you're really not complete. You need that other person that God has for you to, to, to balance you, to bring that, that balance there. Amen. So everybody, do you, you get that? You understand that? All right. Did you have something you wanted to say about that? <laughs> yes. Um, I was just going to, I guess, more on the natural side with, because I've heard people kind of say, you know, men just can't do anything for themselves or whatever, but I mean, that's not true. A lot of men grow up in homes where they're not taught to be independent. Um, and it just comes from how they're taught, um, but it doesn't mean they are not capable <laughs> of doing things um, naturally. So cause I, I know a lot of that involves some of the natural things. For instance, my husband was cooking for himself and washing clothes and taking care of himself when we met, you know. Um, there was nobody he, that he was depending on to do that. And so, um, and there are plenty of men, you know, naturally speaking, again, that, that are like that. It just depends on how they're taught because, again, it goes back to the conversation that we were just having about um, mothers coddling the sons and they won't submit to their husband, but they'll do everything for that son and mm -hmm. keep him dependent on her, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And it's the same thing that they resist and reject in their husband. I'm not cooking for you. I'm not doing your clothes. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. But yet they'll turn around and do those same things for that son and keep that son attached to him. Mm -hmm. And some of that comes that with men um, appearing to not be able to take care of themselves come from them being taught that way. But it's not that they're incapable because I think, you know, God made men very intelligent. Um, but again, the women are there to complete that picture or that puzzle um, to help them in things. Amen. Amen. All right. Do we have any other questions or comments? <laughs> All right, Sister Jasmine got her hand up. <laughs> I don't really have a 
comment. I just thought the part was interesting about when you said that women weren't created in the image of God, but in the glory of their husbands. Yeah, I just thought yeah. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. 